A discussion point that comes up a lot when I talk to candidates uh, in advance of interviews is, is around the issue of, of micromanagement. Um, usually it comes up when I'm asking them what they want from their potential next manager, how they like to be managed, um, what kind of work environment and work dynamic they like to have. And I think most of us, well, probably almost, you know, almost everybody would probably say that they don't want to be micromanaged. The issue probably comes down to what people mean when they say that, because it is one of those terms that we all tend to throw it around, um, but we each are each gonna have our own sort of slightly individual definition of what it is uh, or what it looks like. And sometimes it's even about just how it, how it makes us feel. It's not necessarily something you can quantify in a really, really easy, objective way. So it is a difficult one in itself. Um, I think it's also a very difficult topic to discuss at interview because it can be very risky when you're talking about it to a potential next manager who, of course, doesn't know you yet. All he or she is having to go off is this, is this interview situation. Um, they're trying to get a feel for you and what you will be like to, to report into them. Um, sometimes when we're talking about micromanagement and our desire to avoid it, it can come across as this almost quite sort of pushy, assertive, well, I don't want to do this, I don't want you asking me about this, I don't want to be told, telling you about that, I don't expect this to happen. And it becomes this very, very kind of one-sided sort of explosion of what I don't want to have to put up with in you, my manager. Um, it's important, I think, that we recognise that this is a two-way dynamic and obviously the, the potential manager wants to make sure that it's fine that you don't want to be micromanaged if, if both sides are happy that that's not a good idea. Um, but it's important that it doesn't blur into this kind of area of, ah, do you actually want to be managed at all? Because it's seeming like you're just saying, I don't want any kind of overview or any kind of oversight of what I do. So be very, very mindful of how you handle that explanation. And also just recognize that where you are in your current role or your most recent role, is probably very, very different from where you will be on day one with a new job, with a new company, and a new manager. You, in your, your current role, or your most recent role, let's assume that you, you did very well in that role, you're doing very well in that role, you've earned the right to lots of trust and lots of autonomy and lots of latitude um, from your employer because he or she knows that you're really, really good. They've seen the evidence of that consistently over a, you know, probably quite a long period of time. So of course they can sit there and say, oh yeah, Mark's fine, he's great, I'll let him get on with it, I know it will be good. But if I go and join a new company, um, yes, they're hiring me, hopefully because they think I'm going to be great, but they don't know that for a fact yet, and, and I haven't got started yet. And so inevitably, the way I am managed in those opening sort of weeks and months has to be different. Realistically, it has to be different to perhaps what I've had most recently in a job that I already know, have done for ages, and very good at and very comfortable with. So just, just be aware of that, that sort of slight difference. I think we, I think we sometimes forget that and just expect to be treated exactly the same way by a new employer than we are by the one who does know how brilliant we are. So yeah, just give it some thought as to how you want to frame that because it is a bit different and it does run the risk of you coming across as being very, very demanding and I don't want to be managed at all. And that's, that's not the sort of person that gets hired. So good luck on that area.